history buffs, my name is Nick Hodges, and for this video, I thought I would go over a common frustration of mine with mislabeled true story movies. Horror movies are often the worst offenders where they'll slap on that true events tagline as a cheap marketing gimmick. After all, if a film claims to be based on true events, then people are more likely to go see it. That's based, what gets me. Based on, based true, on true, events. true events. But by the way, when I saw this, I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> of course it's not. Ghosts aren't real. I mean, like, none of these true events are or will ever be verified. They're only based on eyewitness testimonies who are either mistaken, delusional, or lying. Since these witnesses swear they saw a ghost, a supernatural horror film can justify calling itself based on true events. But it also gives the filmmakers the license to creatively run amok. I mean, what are you gonna do? Complain that a doll in Annabelle is inaccurate because it looks nothing like the real one? The concept of a demonic doll should be ridiculous enough already. But you know what? These films are relatively harmless and not meant to be taken seriously. Except, what about the movies that want to be? the ones that go out of their way to make you believe, then it gets a little bit trickier to tell the difference between movies which are based on real events and the ones that aren't. But it should be easy. Take, for example, the 2010 film called The Way Back. Set during the Second World War, it's about a group of prisoners who escape from a Soviet gulag in Siberia. On foot, they make the incredible journey of walking 4,000 miles through Siberia, Mongolia, China, and the Himalayas to seek safe refuge in British India. It's a really good film and I highly recommend it. But you should probably know that this epic trek might not have happened. At least, not in the way it was presented in the movie. If you look at the poster for The Way Back, you'll see that it's responsibly marketed as inspired by real events. That's the key word there, inspired. Meaning that, as disputed as these events may be, the filmmakers still felt creatively compelled in telling this story. So why is The Way Back contested as a true story? Well, the film is in fact based on a book called The Long Walk, written by a Polish army lieutenant called Slavomir Ravich. In his memoirs, he claims that he and six others made this journey in 1941 and reached British India in the winter of 1942. The Long Walk was published in 1956 and had a successful run. But its credibility has often been called into question. For example, it's kind of weird how similar his premise is to another book published only a year before. The book As Far As My Feet Will Carry Me is based on the account of a German soldier called Cornelius Rost, who escaped from a Siberian gulag during World War II and walked all the way to Iran. But this story has also been disputed. The most damning evidence against Ravage was when the BBC recovered former Soviet records in 2006 that stated that he had been transferred in 1942 to a refugee camp in Iran. His presence in Palestine was also recorded shortly afterwards, making his escape to India impossible. There have also been other people who came forward over the years, some claiming that they were the ones who made the long walk, and others that they met the real people who had. None of these claims have ever been verified, but it's possible that the origins of the Long Walk might be based on some truth. Like an urban myth, retold countless times by soldiers during the Second World War. Did the author really take the walk or not? This is a book published in 1956. Never out of print, but this cloud of controversy hung around it. I said, well, I couldn't really do it if, if, if I didn't think it was true. So we did some more digging. Um, researching and found that the walk had taken place. We got that. I felt comfortable with that. Was this man on the walk? I don't know. Uh, so I said, I'd, I'd write, like to fictionalize it. Let's retitle it, draw inspiration from the book. So that perfectly explains what inspired by real events is supposed to mean, when a film adapts an event that may or may not have happened and crafting a mostly fictional story around it, often changing the names of characters and their backstories from the historical sources. Films that are based on real events are entirely different. They are meant to be much more heavily influenced by the original source material. Characters' names and deeds are often kept the same, with creative liberties taken, but overall the film should be recognisable to the events and persons they're based on. Well, at least they're supposed to. Unfortunately, there's a lot of films out there that are really influenced by true events, but market themselves as based on true events simply because the latter is far more engaging to an audience, making it easier for them to sympathize with the film's characters, especially if they believe that everything they're watching happened. Let me give another example. There's a South Korean film I watched recently called My Way, and it's about a Korean soldier during World War II, and his story is... <laughs> it's one of the craziest you've ever heard. It begins with his forced conscription into the Japanese army. Then in 1939, he fights in a huge battle against the Soviets. Then he gets captured and thrown into a brutal Soviet POW camp, 
but his time in the camp is interrupted when Germany invades the Soviet Union, resulting with him being drafted a second time into the Soviet army to fight the Germans, only to be captured again now by the Germans and forced to fight in their army. And then with the worst luck in the world, he is posted in Normandy, resulting in this poor sod having to survive through D-Day. But incredibly, and against all odds, he survived this horrific battle and was captured by the Americans. Only this time, he would not be forced to pick up another rifle. He would spend the rest of the war in a POW camp in Britain and eventually freed. And that's all I have to say about that. So here's a picture of the real guy being questioned by an American after D-Day. The Korean soldier's name was, uh, please excuse my poor attempt at Korean, Yang Kyung Jong. And everything I said about the armies and battles he fought in are all based on his account. Not much else is known about him, however, just that after the war he moved to Illinois and lived there for the remainder of his life before dying in 1992, never speaking about his experiences in the war, not even to his family. The film takes inspiration from his story, but then just goes off and does his own thing. All the characters and their personal interactions are fictional, including the protagonist, who's not called Yang Kyung Jong, but renamed Jun Sik. Jun Sik is an athletic runner living in Japanese occupied Korea, and has a vicious rivalry with a Japanese runner called Tatsuo Hasegawa. After being unfairly disqualified from a marathon because of Jun Sik's Korean heritage, a riot breaks out. Blamed for this, he is then drafted into the Japanese army, but it just so happens that Tatsuo has volunteered and they end up serving together with Tatsuo being his superior officer and treating him like crap. But when they both get captured by the Soviets and sent to Siberia, the roles in their relationship shift, and they spend a good chunk of the movie punching each other. Lots and lots of punching. When they aren't doing that, they fight together in every battle that the real Yong Kyung Jang did, eventually overcoming their differences and becoming comrades, resulting in a film that cannot claim it's based on true events, when really it's just inspired by true events. But you know what? At least it resembles to what actually happened, unlike some other films. Let's take a look at The Strangers, another crappy horror film that's supposed to be inspired by true events. The plot involves a couple who are terrorized by a group of psychopaths who break into their house. Not exactly outside the realm of plausibility, except nothing you see in the film actually happened. The Strangers isn't inspired by any one single event, but from all over the place. Like the Manson family murders of 1969, or the Keddie murders of 1981, neither of which have anything to do with each other. The director also stated in interviews that when he was a kid, he remembered a gang of youths breaking into houses in his neighborhood. So, yeah, apparently The Strangers has its inspired by true events tagline because generally, sometimes people get murdered by home invaders. Look, Writers are inspired by random stuff all the time, but that doesn't justify your crappy movie saying it's based on or inspired by anything unless it actually is. That's why well-respected movies don't need to lie to their audiences to sell tickets. Unless that movie is Fargo. Yeah, that's a good one. Yes, even the Coen brothers are guilty of bullshitting their audience. Now, don't get me wrong, this is an awesome movie and well deserving of its Academy Awards, especially for Best Original Screenplay, because everything that transpires in it comes from their imagination. From the very beginning of the film, titles appear stating that this is a true story, that it took place in Minnesota in 1987, but the survivors requested that their names be changed. But Fargo is anything but a true story. This movie was not based on an actual crime. Who says? Was it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this story is completely based on a real event. Yeah, the story is, the characters, you know, we, we weren't interested in making a documentary and the characters are really inventions um, based on the sort of outline of events. Then why did you put a disclaimer in the end credits saying that all the events in the film are fictitious? I mean, like, there's kind of a contradiction there. The main similarity Fargo bears to real life events, maybe, was the murder of Heli Crafts in 1986, when her husband disposed of a body in a wood chipper. Everything else, though, is a complete work of fiction. The Coen brothers even admitted so in later years. In an interview with the New York Times, Joel Cohen said, It's completely made up, or as we like to say, the only thing true about it is that it's a story. Which is why, during that interview, you could see Ethan Cohen smirking when asked about their film's credibility. So what was the reason for this whole song and dance? What was the point of it all? Well, in another interview with Time Out magazine, Joel Cohen said, If an audience believes that something's based on a real event, it gives you permission to do things they might otherwise not accept. As much as I admire the Cohen brothers, I don't agree with this thinking. 
films shouldn't feel the need to trick their audiences, especially one of Fargo's caliber. Personally, I feel that this is a cheap tactic, and it undermines other true story films that try to make an effort. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Is it okay for films to mislead their audiences, or should they live up to their marketing? Should based ons and inspired buys mean exactly that? Let me know in the comments section, and remember to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Nick Hodges.